Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel, and here's a headline from you today that might make you think you're listening to yesterday's video, but I promise you that you are not. But here's the headline from you today. Ripple will lose against SEC crypto executive claims. And so this is separate from a video I made yesterday when an attorney stated why he believed that Ripple was going to lose to the SEC in the lawsuit. And I, I, I've, I've ripped that one to shreds. It's finished. This is a different one. And this is uh, an executive at a crypto company who, uh, from what I've seen, is, is, is not and never has been an attorney. But, you know, all of just almost all of the actual attorneys that have the perspective that, hey, um, XRP is a security. Almost 100 percent of them had bias against XRP before the lawsuit began. It's hard to find people who are a blank slate that learn the facts of the case and say, yeah, of course, XRP is a security. You can find the people that say that, but they're biased. I, that, that's, I, I, there's been like maybe one or two exceptions of actual attorneys after the fact that, that seem to think that. And I've highlighted them too, because I, I'm, I'm fine with diverse opinions. It's just when people are clearly biased beforehand, and then they have these opinions and they're espousing them, especially they got big followings, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Because I don't think that it's intellectually honest. If somebody has that perspective, but they were a blank slate going into this, and I'm like, okay. And it's, and it's fine. We've all got our biases. It's just like, I'm owning mine. Like, I'm clearly biased in favor of XRP, and I'm acknowledging that. But these other, some of these attorneys, though, they just act like they've, they just, they just learned about XRP yesterday. No, it's just misleading and dishonest. I, just, I don't like it. Um, also, there, and you're going to love this, I think, there's a congressman who is seeking now to open an investigation against Kim jong Ginzer. That's right, SEC Chair... Uh, Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim jong Gary seeking to open an investigation against him. So I'm uh, going to be sharing with you uh, information on these two stories and perspective from Attorney John Deaton because he stated, look, and this is a quote, he said, there might be a problem for the SEC. And I'll explain to you why he's saying that. But when he says might be a problem, I think it's more like tongue in cheek and no, they're, they're going to have a problem. <laughs> but uh, before breaking this down further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so into this first piece, again titled, Ripple Will Lose Against SEC Crypto Executive Claims. Gene Hoffman, Chief Operating Officer at blockchain company Chia Network. Cha-cha-cha-chia. Chia. Anybody else think of that when they see that? Chia Network, C-H-I-A. Remember that? The, the, the little plants you can grow them? Like there's like, there's Chia everything. There's like even like a Chia Trump. I got that from my mom one year. It's hilarious. Anyway, uh, so Gene Hoffman, uh, chief operating officer at blockchain company Chia Network, has predicted that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission will defeat Ripple in a closely watched legal battle that will soon stretch into its third year. The only outcome is that a federal judge will rule that Ripple's sales of XRP made XRP a security, he tweeted. The former public company CEO says that federal judges are skeptical enough to know that most people bought XRP hoping the number would go up. Hence the arguments of Ripple and its supporters about the cryptocurrency's alleged utility likely won't fly. Well, you know, good news for us is that that's not what the test is to determine whether or not something is a security and investment contract. Uh, that is not it. If, if the number go up, oh, well, it's expected to go up security. What's that? You, you bought a home, you expect it to be worth more? Oh, security. What's that? You got some, uh, I don't know, what, what the hell else is out there? Baseball cards, shoe, people collect all sorts of stuff. Shoes, you know? It, it, security, hoping the number would go up, right? See, that's not the test, though. There's this thing called the Howie test, and it's a multi-pronged test. And you have to satisfy all prongs of the test, or else the thing you're talking about is not a security. This doesn't work. But if you look at the actual tweet as cited there, and I pulled it up on the screen, you can see the, the real thing here from Gene Hoffman. He, he literally wrote verbatim. The only outcome is that a federal judge will rule that Ripple sales of XRP made XRP a security. So note what he's, he's not saying. He's not saying that just Ripple's transactions themselves are investment contracts. He's stating that because that happened, it made XRP itself a security. That's how I took it anyway. Now, I wrote to him. Just giving an opportunity, just in case he wants to clarify um, that that's not what he meant. But what he, but I mean, if you look, if you just take the words on the screen there, he is saying XRP itself is a security. But maybe he could be a little bit more clear. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt if he, you know, if he wants to come back. I, I don't know that he's probably not going to respond to me. If he does, though, I'll be happy to talk about it. 
But I responded to him, given because I think it's, to be fair, given an opportunity if he misspoke. And so I wrote, are you literally arguing XRP itself is a security or specific transactions are unregistered securities transactions? If your answer is yes, XRP is a security, then I have a follow-up question. Are oranges securities? And you guys know I'm asking at this point, going back to the SEC v. WJ How We Go, I made it to the Supreme Court in 1946. It's about orange groves and oranges and the underlying asset being oranges. Is the fact that that was part of the scheme, the part of the investment contract, did that mean make the asset itself a security? Obviously not. And so if he if he doesn't know I'm asking that, that's an indicator right there that it's it's not worth even listening to this individual, obviously. I I, I mean, he, ta- he talked about Howie before, though. I know that. I just, I, I, I don't know. You might just be thinking he can get away with saying a bunch of nonsense, but not actually knowing what he's talking about. People do it all the time. It's the internet, folks. You, you know, you're not new. This isn't the first time you've logged on, right? But uh, but that's why when he said here again, you know, <laughs> outcomes that a federal judge will rule ripple sales of XRP made XRP a security, that's pretty precise language. That's wrong. Couldn't be more obvious. So Attorney Deaton retweeted the article that covered that, and Attorney Deaton wrote the following. Remember immediately after the library decision what I said. I said it was a total victory for the SEC and that SEC attorneys couldn't have written a better decision for them. I also said the SEC and many other people would make a big deal about it. So pause the thing about this. Have you noticed, uh, you know, an uptick? And Well, two things have simultaneously happened. So there have been more articles uh, along these lines of, because people are saying all sorts of stuff like, obviously, Ripple's in the wrong, SEC's going to win. There's been an uptick in that. But there's also been an uptick of uh, of confidence in XRP for those who are paying attention. There have been all sorts of positive articles written. So there's coverage from both sides increasing notably after the library case. And so people are coming out of the woodwork, especially if they've got bias against Ripple and or XRP, and they're making that known. And then pretending like they don't have bias, which I just think is intellectually dishonest. Like, I'm clearly biased. I'm pro XRP. Now, I started out as a blank slate in 2017. I've got my bias, but I, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm also not an attorney, and I'm not pretending to be one. Um, anyway, and then attorney Deaton says, I also said that if Judge Torres followed the library uh, judge's reasoning, Ripple would outright lose. I said that reasoning would cause a lot of Ripple will lose comments. It's expected because holding a lot of LBC, so that's library credit token in the library case, uh, was a big deal uh, to the judge and Ripple holds half the XRP. Now, personally, I believe the SEC snatched defeat from the jaws of victory in this case. He's referencing the Ripple's, Ripple case, there, of course, because it chose to go with an all or nothing theory unless the judge decides to split the baby. And I was pausing up what he's talking about there, and he says, if the judge splits the baby. So the judge could rule in favor of the SEC entirely, in favor of the of, of Ripple's position entirely, or could, quote-unquote, split the baby, which would mean, perhaps, that uh, Ripple is found to have violated securities laws to some degree, maybe has to pay a fine, but, you know, XRP itself is, she, she declares something about it, as in, it's not a security, obviously, XRP itself is not. So there, there could be the splitting of the baby. That's that, that's what he means by that. And then he says, remember, the judge in library is in the first circuit and has to follow the SG case. Judge Torres is in the second circuit and must follow Revic and other cases. Also, remember, library didn't challenge two out of three Howey factors. The common enterprise factor is a real problem for the SEC. Uh, yeah, exactly. So think about this. So the SEC started, if memory serves, I, I believe that they initially made the claim that Ripple was the common enterprise, but then they realized that that wasn't going to really probably play too well. And so then during the course of all the pretrial litigation activities, they changed the story to some sort of amorphous blob is somehow the 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 the, uh, the, the uh, central authority that you know the common enterprise by stating that it's the totality of the scheme and everybody participating in the, in the ecosystem. And that's when Ripple came out as like, well, that's obviously absurd because what you're talking about is not a common enterprise. You're talking about common interest. Common interest is very different. You know, just like you can have all sorts of people utilizing gold, precious metal, 
uh, having unrelated business models. So they have a common interest in gold continuing to be worth something, but that's it. They have a common interest. There is no common enterprise there. And so Ripple, I think they did a great job tearing the entire concept of shreds. But, but even to that point, the SEC has never gotten really specific about what the common enterprise is. And so Library gave that point up. They acknowledged that they were the common enterprise, which was a major mistake in hindsight, obviously. Ripple hasn't done that. They have not, they have not conceded any ground. And then Attorney Deaton says, when someone says the SEC is going to win, respectfully ask what that win looks like. Are they saying the judge is going to rule granted to the SEC's summary judgment as written? For example, a ruling in favor of the SEC that Ripple offered an unregistered security in 2014 to the approximate 100 people it sent a brochure to, but present day sales are not a security, is a complete Ripple victory. Yeah, think about that. So there was a brochure to like 100 people, but a brochure to 100 people, eh, does it make sense to, you know, sue to the tune of $1.3 billion? For a hundred brochures? <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, it's completely ridiculous. It is what it is. Though. If Judge Torres agrees with this, quote, oh, and this this is a, a, a quote from an from actual case from 1981 titled SEC v. Aquasonic Products. And the quote from that 1981 case reads as follows. The Howey test must be applied to each transaction, transaction and examined as of the time that the transaction took place. And so Attorney Deaton says, if Judge Torres agrees with that, then the SEC has a real problem. So I think the SEC is going to have a real problem, but we don't know for sure because the judge is a human and sometimes humans come to really bad, bad conclusions. But to this point, there's been all sorts of reason to be optimistic about uh, Judge Torres and how she's been analyzing this case. But... Couldn't like wh how can you just say that every transaction for all time, everything every, way into the future, there's no endpoint. All that, even on secondary markets, people have no idea that Ripple exists. Those are all securities transactions. Well, the case here in 1981, SEV, SECV Aquasonic Products stated, no, that's not how that works. They're saying each transaction, each individual transaction, every single one of them must be examined individually, and 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 look at it examined as of the time that it took place. So that actually does matter. There's case precedent for that to be the case, not just that XRP magically becomes security because right then. No, that's not how this works, you little punk ass bit. That's what Mike Tyson would say about that. And then Deaton says, the SEC's specific evidence are things like a brochure to 100 people in 2014, a 2013 tweet, an email to an investor in 2015, a list of exchanges trading XRP in 2017 on Ripple's website. The SEC offering these examples from almost a decade ago to present uh, present day might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, so technically might's the word, but I'm thinking uh, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> I mean, it better be a problem because that's only reasonable, reasonable and, and logical. The rational thing to do is to look at the circumstance and say, yeah, that's a damn problem right there. And then take a look at this to the next topic here. This came from J.W. Verrett, who was previously on a, ah, I always forget the damn name. It was like the SEC Advisory Committee. That might have been the exact name. If not, it was something close to that. He was on that committee until recently, and he was working uh, directly with Kim Jong Gensler. And he's been very critical of Kim Jong Gensler. And he shared uh, he shared this. <laughs> Kim, Kim Jong Gensler. You about to dung get investigated, it looks like. Take a look at this. Democrat Congressman Richie Torres has opened an investigation into how Gary Gensler has fundamentally failed as a regulator on FTX. And by the way, that's a quote. Fundamentally failed as a regulator on FTX. And the whole thing's on your screen. I'm just going to cover the top portion over here, but if you want to read the whole thing, it is right there for you. And so it reads as follows. This is from Congressman Richie Torres. I am writing to respectfully request that the Government Accountability Office, or GAP for short, GAP, conduct an independent review of the SEC's failure to protect the investing public from the egregious mismanagement and malfeasance of FTX, which has brought billions of dollars in losses to about a million creditors and customers. Chair Gary Gensler, by the logic of his own public pronouncements, is singularly responsible for the regulatory failures surrounding the collapse of FTX and its affiliate FTX US. 
Chair Gensler has said on countless occasions that there is no need for authorizing legislation from Congress. The SEC presently possesses the authority it needs to regulate crypto exchanges. If the SEC has the authority, Mr. Gensler claims, why did he fail to uncover the largest crypto Ponzi scheme in United States history? One cannot have it both ways. Asserting authority while avoiding accountability. It is on Congress to pass laws, but once the necessary laws have been enacted, it is on the regulators to apply those laws to conduct investigations and protect the public. When it comes to FTX, Chair Gensler fundamentally failed as a regulator, and he has no one but himself to blame. And this next part I truly love because I brought this up to um, check this out. <laughs> The SEC chose to dedicate scarce time and resources to investigating Kim Kardashian rather than opaque crypto exchanges, leaving many to question whether the commission is operating efficiently and apolitically and whether it has its priorities in the right place. The operating principle of the SEC must be protection for the investing public rather than publicity for the political appointee in charge. Exactly. Oh, I love that so much. And that's why I remember tweeting out after the FTX collapse about a month ago, something along the lines of, well, you know, Gary Ginzer may have missed, uh, he may not been able to sniff out the largest crypto Ponzi scheme in United States history, but he did protect us from a Kim Kardashian tweet. So he did that. <laughs> it's completely absurd. I'm glad that he juxtaposed that himself here. It's, it's so clear that this could not be more absurd and ridiculous. So, I love seeing that you know, someone's bringing something to him. You know, ah, oh, it's a it's a true delight. It's a little refreshing, right? I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.